I made a mod for Subnautica that generates random mazes and builds them using the base pieces in the game. And it's actually got a few tricks up its sleeve to make things more difficult. I'm going to show you everything this mod is capable of and how I did it. Wait, are you still there? Warning, Hello? emergency power only. For this maze challenge, I'm going to solve mazes of higher and higher difficulty by increasing their size and enabling more and more challenging options. I'm also going to take you behind the scenes and show you how all of it works. And if you stick around until the end, there's a big surprise at the finish line I can't wait to show you. Let's get started. Let's do some maze challenges. All right, here's our settings. Size 10 by 10. All right, we're going to generate. There's the seed and settings. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. The first step was figuring out how to spawn base pieces, which was a bit tricky, but not too bad. The base building system in Subnautica in the code is very complicated and strange. I'm getting little bits and pieces, but the broader, like the higher level understanding of what's happening is still kind of beyond me. I'm not giving up. The real hard part was getting them to connect to each other. Boom. Ah. It just disappears. How funny. All right. Uh, what does this mean? What are we even trying to figure out anymore? I've totally lost the thread of what life is. So bases in Subnautica exist on a grid system made up of these blocks called cells that are all the same size. Some pieces take up one cell, some take up more than one cell. And when you add a new piece to an existing base, it actually creates a new base made up of only that piece and grafts it onto the existing base. You are no longer the center of the world, is what it's telling this new base piece. You are now a part of something bigger than yourself, which is the existing base. And if the new piece extends past the bounds of the existing base, it will extend the base's bounds. Your bounds have extended. You've grown as a base, congratulations. Which lets you do funny stuff like having two base pieces that are across the map from each other, but still part of the same base. Awesome. Well, the mod was making good progress already. Yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, that was easy enough. We're gonna do a new random seed, 20 by 20. Power off. There's the seed and settings. Three, two, one, go. Now that we could place and connect base pieces, it was time to make ourselves a maze. To do this, I used something called Prim's algorithm. Here's a basic description from Wikipedia. So you start with a grid full of walls. Pick a cell and mark it as part of the maze and add its walls to a list of walls. While this list of walls is not empty, pick a random wall from the list if only one of the cells on either side of that wall has been visited, knock that wall down and mark this new cell as part of the maze and add its remaining walls to the list of walls. Then remove that wall from the list. Just repeat that until your wall list is empty and you've got a maze. So I implemented this algorithm in the mod and used some Unicode characters to show the generated maze layout in the log file. How cool is that? Or as I put it, deliciously satisfying. Then I just translated those shapes to Subnautica's available corridor pieces, slapped on a multi-purpose room for the start and finish, and boom, we've got ourselves a maze. Well, minus an entrance. That was way more trouble than I was expecting it to be. Turns out the hatch isn't actually a separate base piece. It's what's known in the code as a face, like a window. All right, just throw a beacon on that puppy so we can find it easily, and boom, maze. Keeping calm, nope. Hey, there we go. 42 seconds, baby. 43,963. Random seed. 30 by 30. We're going to flood it. All right, here we go. There's the seed and settings. In three, two, one, go. Next, it was time to get a little fancier. Let's add some optional features to the maze. This part went through a few design iterations, but this is what I ended up with. I wanted to make it so players didn't have to touch a config file at all and could change all the mod settings in-game quickly and easily. This wall is basically just a scaled up picture frame with four normal sized picture frames on top of it, each showing a relevant picture that changes when you click on them to toggle their setting, and assigned to show the settings name. Power toggles the base's power on and off, flooding floods or drains the base, which I made take 10 seconds instead of happening instantly just because it looked cooler. I also had to disable the base's hull integrity check so the base wouldn't just flood on its own in survival mode, since it has no reinforcements. Creatures we will get into in a minute. That's a fun one. And oxygen, which toggles whether or not you use up oxygen in survival mode when the base is flooded or the power is off. Oh, and don't worry, your oxygen stays full in the start and finish areas. Size lets you set the dimensions of the maze anywhere from 2x2 two two to 50x50, 50 50, 
It doesn't have to be perfectly square, but I usually set it to square just because it's easier. Seed sets the random seed the generator uses to generate the maze and its features. If you set the same seed and size, you will get the same maze. This is super useful if you want to try the same maze again, or challenge a friend to beat the same maze. If you set the seed to blank or enter nonsense, a seed will be set randomly the moment you generate the maze. Timer controls whether or not your time to complete the maze is measured and shown over in the top right corner. Then the generate button lets you start the maze generation and updates you on its progress, or lets you know if you've changed a setting that requires regenerating the maze. Boom! The settings wall! This is getting tricky. This is getting real tricky. Are we going in circles? I don't know. Oh my gosh, there's so much. We're not even at the biggest size yet. What's up here? <gasps> hey, we did it! Yes! Five minutes and 14 seconds. 40 by 40. Creatures on. There's the seed and settings. In three, two, one, go! Now, about those creatures I mentioned earlier. I wanted to have some sort of monster hiding in the maze to attack the player. So I started messing around with putting different creatures in the maze. <laughs> uh, it's filling up with peepers in here. Whoa, I got kicked out. Oh no, it still thinks I'm in a base. It's like the base has been abandoned for several years and it's been overtaken by the peepers. Oh look, ew, they're all coming out the walls. Oh, I hate that they're all going to the ceiling. Can I set them free if I deconstruct it? Oh, they're free to go. Okay, that kind of worked. Let's try Reaper Leviathans. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm Scale Reaver Leviathan! I hate what I've created. Boom, we spawn the maze. Hello? Ah! Oh god, they're too big. Even at one tenth scale, they're too big. Whoop, they're a little derpy. They don't swim very well when they're this small. Reapers just did not work well. Their swimming and attacking behavior just wasn't meant to function at this scale. And they weren't gonna do what we wanted without reconfiguring a ton of their behavior and code. Then I had the idea. I think the crash fish would be perfect though. Crash fish are these creatures that guard their homes and will jump out, chase you, and explode if you get too close. If you've seen my one second days Subnautica video, this is why the crash fish were also aggressive in that video. I was in the middle of testing using crash fish for this mod. So for this to work, it turns out what I have to do is spawn their little nest, which is called a crash home, which will then spawn a crash fish on its own. I then modify the attacking behavior of these crash fish so that they send out a line called a ray cast that's five meters long and sees if it collides with anything. If the first thing it hits is the player, attack. Now this mod was really starting to come together. Oh my gosh, this is so long and winding. No, and it's a dead end. Oh, I should make sure these guys are working, actually. Are these working? Yes, yes, yep. Yep, they're working. Where are we? I've lost all sense of direction. It's hitting me how big 40 by 40 is. Nope, what? No, we got too close. Oh, God. Nope, there's another one. Wow. Oh, God, I gotta be more careful. Whoa, hello. We must be running into the kelp forest. Can I eat this or something? Consume, oh, that's nice. I'll take it. There, I chopped it down and we got a free snack. Whoa, whoa, oh my gosh, look at this. This is crazy. It's like I'm constantly amazed. No pun intended. Seek fluid intake. Uh-oh, we're getting dehydrated. God, we're so dehydrated. Yes, water. Oh. stabilizing. Oh, no, 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 Woo! I dilly-dallied. There were so many crash fish in that one section. Wow! Nope, gotta go. Got to go. Oh, no. Oh, that's not ideal. Oh, oh. Medium corridor. Oh, hey, hey, we did it. Yes! We did it! <laughs> 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Up until this point, I had basically been able to implement everything I had wanted for this mod. There was just one really difficult persistent bug I had not been able to defeat. So there's this background noise loop that plays when you enter a base. It's a quiet hum that just sets the atmosphere and helps it feel more like you're in a metal tube under the ocean. The scanner room camera drones have one of these background noise loops as well. Theirs just sounds a little different, more like a low quality speaker. But these background sound loops also send certain other sounds through a filter. And unfortunately, this includes creature sounds. In a bass, they're muffled and quieter, like you're hearing them through a wall. Because, well, normally you would be.
Well, oh well. Say la vie, right? I'm sure I can just move past this and not think about it again. At this point, I actually completed an entire 50 by 50 maze, although it may have taken a couple tries. No, no, no! I died! No, no, no! We're gonna juke him! We're gonna juke him! Ah! It's fine. It's fine. <gasps> huh! We found it! And I thought I was done with this mod. But the crash fish attacking you and exploding was still quite muffled, and that's not very exciting. So, I picked it back up again, and one night, I finally fixed creature sounds inside of bases. Alright, we're gonna try it, we're gonna try it. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. Is that it? I think that's it! Are you kidding me? Oh my god, y'all, I've been fighting this for months! Oh my god. We figured it out! It works! Look at that! The last bug, and I can remove it! I decided I had to do the 50 by 50 maze one more time, and this time, I wanted to be able to do it with oxygen off. But since a 50 by 50 maze could take longer than any amount of oxygen you can carry, I modded it so that 1 in 10 dead ends, instead of containing a crash fish, would contain purple brain coral, which releases oxygen bubbles occasionally. And then, our final run was ready. Final settings, power off. Flooding on. Creatures on. Oxygen off. Let's do this. All right, there's our settings. There's our seed. Here we go. This is the big one. We got to do it. We got to do it. <gasps> In three, two, one, go. This is the biggest size I've made possible with this mod. Not because it couldn't go bigger, but the game was not made with bases this big in mind. And I really don't want to crash too many people's computers. It's tough to run the game with a base this size existing in the world. In fact, when you generate mazes around this size, you'll probably notice a long freeze in the game while it recalculates the base's geometry as a final step. I mean, I even optimized the mod by skipping this step until the very end to speed things up. But in any case, back up your saves and don't blame me if anything crashes. You've been warned. It's so dark, it's so spooky. We gotta go, we gotta go, whoa! Oh. Ow! All right, we gotta heal, we gotta heal. Ooh, that was real bad. Oh, no, 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 oh. no, 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 leave me alone. Oh, okay, no, what? Two in a row? No, 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 no. please, sir. I'm a lonely diver. Ah, we gotta heal. Oh, I'll be seeing this in my nightmares tonight. It's hard to see the crash fish when it's this dark. Whoa, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Please enjoy your evening. Oh! <sighs> this is so stressful. Day three, I'm still stuck in the maze. Supplies are beginning to dwindle. Morale is low. I find the occasional brain coral, but it sustains only my oxygen, not my spirit. I'm beginning to question if there is a finish line to this maze, or if I'm doomed to wander these corridors forever. Sometimes life can feel like that. Just an endless maze of feeling lost, confusion, danger, where everything looks the same, and yet you have no idea where you are. None of it looks familiar, but I soldier on because I know the only way I'm going to make it out of here. <laughs> Please. Sorry, diary. I got interrupted there for a second. I didn't mean to be rude. Diary, why are you walking away from me? Diary? Diary, no, please. Diary, you're all I have. No. Anyway, I like to make up lore in my head. <laughs> no, no, whoa, whoa. Nope, sir. Sorry, sir. Nope. Nope. Sorry, sir. Nope. Nope. There you go. Whoa. I feel my stomach getting tight. Oh, God. No, God! No! Please! I'm a nice person! He gives the injury. I have no sense of where we are in this maze anymore. We have to be making progress, right? It just feels like endless chaos. Oh, we're running low on oxygen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oxygen. All right, we gotta switch tanks. All right, we're in our backup tank. No! Oh! Whoa! 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 Okay, okay, well, we gotta heal again. I really need a brain coral, please. Our spare tank is running out. Ah! I'm getting nervous. Oh! Ho! Oh, oh, ho! Oh, ho! Okay! Ha! Oh, okay. We're fine. Crap! 
No! Oh my god! How? I was around so many corners! Oh, we're gonna use up all our med kits! We're gonna solve the freaking maze! We have to! Show me the crash mesh so I can get out of here and go home and cry under the covers. Oh, my stomach. I'm so nervous. Oh! Whoa! 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 Can we juke him? Juke! Juke! Yeah, boy! Get juked! Do you see that? Please! Please let us beat the maze. Okay, I need to I need to calm down and come back to center. I need to listen to the posters that I put in there. Everybody just like Oh. Balls. <laughs> That was beautiful, y'all. That was beautiful. Y'all worked together on that one. I loved that. Thank you. That gave me the strength to go on. Let's do this. Every time I see a long corridor like that, I'm just like hoping so bad that I see the finish line in the foggy distance. I do have a heart rate monitor. I didn't think I'd need it for this. We can do heart rate monitor. Oh, okay. That scared me. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me flinch at the brain coral. <laughs> I'm real jumpy right now, if you can't tell. As a final touch, I want to make it so that as soon as you cross over the finish line, a little celebration begins. I thought that might make it feel more rewarding to complete a maze, so I started experimenting with items in the game that have interesting visual effects. And spawn! Whoa! <laughs> what is- oh! What? Why do I have a candle above my head? Why is the ghost following me now? What is that? What is happening? I don't want this fire extinguisher anymore. It's it's really, let's drop it, drop it. Whoa, whoa, why is it going off now? Whoa, why? <laughs> what? Whoa, now it's working. What is, what is happening? Why? The flare is so, oh my God. I didn't even see it at first! <laughs> it's the Mega Flare! Oh, I can still pick it up, yep. Boop. Give me the flare. Look, this one's working! Ah! I've lost my mind! I don't get it all yet! I think the only solution is that Subnautica has become sentient and it resents me messing with it in the ways that I have. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Mesmer! Mesmer! Here we go, this! Ow! They created a trippy effect around the screen and I thought that would be really fun. Then I added a little sound effect from the game that would play as you into the finish area and... Oh, oh, oh! Yes! <laughs> we did it! Oh my gosh, yo, we solved the maze! Yes! Yes! Oh, I feel like I'm dying. I can't, oh, we did, it's, it's over. It's over. And then this is a picture frame with a sign on top of it that says warp to start. And when you click on it, it warps you to the start line. So that's the maze generator mod. It has been months of work, sometimes all day and night, but I'm really happy with how it came out. This has been the biggest modding challenge of my life. Also, having figured this out, this opens up a lot more doors in the future for further shenanigans in Subnautica, because now I have the tool set I need. I know how to do much more than I did previously. I know a lot more about how Subnautica works than when I started, So, and I have ideas, so that is exciting. If you want to try the maze generator yourself, there's a link to the mod in the description. And if you're extra curious and want to see how it works under the hood, there's a link to the source code as well. And if y'all like this video, maybe I'll work on a version 2 with more features. It could have stuff like glass base pieces, the ability to change the location of the maze, more control over stuff like how many creatures there are or how much oxygen there is, randomizing the finish line placement, making the maze 3D. Let me know what you thought or what you want to see me try next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Diary, no, please.